The world is a sick place. In spite of its beauty, millions of humans suffer, many of them unnecessarily, even amongst your friends and family. And the healthcare industry still relies heavily on outdated and inefficient modes of working. However, in the Nordic region, world leading in health tech, entrepreneurs and startups are working towards a paradigm shift. Many of these are part of Health Tech Nordic, a community accelerating the growth of startups as well as uniting pioneers to create better health worldwide. Health Tech Nordic isn't about the future. It's about the hundreds of startups acting here and now, about the hundreds of worldwide solutions already in use. It's also about those in development with innovations far beyond what many thought previously possible. Healthcare isn't always about finding treatment. It's also about the ability to distribute them or even preventing the need for them altogether. With digital tools and solutions, the existing healthcare capacity can increase dramatically, not only saving lives, but also leading to a better quality of life with more possibilities and less dependency. The world is a sick place. However, through providing new and better ways of giving and receiving healthcare, the companies within Health Tech Nordic are at the forefront of a paradigm shift. We already have the digital tools and solutions to empower you as an individual, as a patient, or as a healthcare provider. Together, we can change how we view healthcare. Together, we can change how the world cares. Hi, hello, and welcome from Stockholm. Uh, I'm so sad that I cannot be in, at this beautiful event today in person, but I'm honored that I can be here at least virtually. And I'm also super happy that I have with me today a super special guest, um, Marianne Larsson. She is a president and co-founder of Health Tech Nordic. Uh, basically a sister organization of us in the Nordics. And I'm super honored to have you here today with us. Maybe I can give you the word right away to introduce yourself a little bit about your background. Um, and yes, over to you, Marian. Thank you so much. Um, I, I would have loved to be there as well. I would love to learn more about you guys in Switzerland. Uh, so I'm Marianne, uh, I'm 62 years old, and I have more than 40 years of background in international business development. Uh, and the latter 16 years, I've been doing innovation in the innovation system. And I'm also a mother, a grandmother, and a friend. Oh, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And then maybe uh, just a... Yes, no, 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 that's uh, really impressive and I uh, love what you're doing. So maybe you can say just a short, I mean, we'll dive into it uh, right away afterwards, but maybe you can have a little elevator pitch on what is Health Tech Nordic. Yeah, Health Tech Nordic is a world leading collection of companies bringing more and better health for the buck. So uh, companies that are relieving people with chronic disease, for instance, or mental health issues and many more issues. And they're empowering and multiplying the capabilities of professionals, doctors and nurses, and they're also reducing admin. So we've got 200 approximately that are on the market and another 100 in the pipe, so to say. They all wow. contribute to empowering individuals. Yeah. Really impressive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and so I think it's, it's uh, you know, this organization, I, I mean, it sounds similar like ours and we know why we started ours uh, a couple of years ago. But yeah, yours is now 10 years old. That's like, it must be a super rich experience so far. And if you look back, maybe, can you tell us a little bit something about why this all started and, and how you started it? Yeah. Uh, so I I'll, I think I'll start with, 
why innovation? Uh, we all talk about innovation and um, the reason would of course be that we want to solve challenges, societal and other challenges, uh, but um, why do governments and local governments and you and I invest our time and resources in innovation? That is because we also want to succeed and make economic uh, development. So uh, governments want countries to develop economically, companies to, to grow and, and employ people uh, and, and provide more tax income to society. So that's the other aspect of things. And, and what we saw was when I started working in the innovation system, I, I did that because I was afraid that we're not getting that growth. Um, and, and we weren't. So um, uh, colleagues and I went to Silicon Valley uh, because that was really hot and, and they were so good. And we studied what, what makes them good and, and what is good. And, and good there is it's tempo. So they, they outperform us in tempo. We may have most brilliant solutions in Switzerland, in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, ne the Netherlands, all across Europe. But then they're faster than us and they just run ahead and surpass us. Um, now we can't copy what they're doing, but we went back home and tried to see how can we increase tempo. And the first thing we started was a uh, an innovation arm together with the tech, um, the, the, oh, what is it? Telecoms, uh, the Ericsson, mm -hmm. uh, Sony, Huawei, and other companies that are located where I live in South Sweden. Um, so we started an innovation arm focusing on entrepreneurs, not ideas or people bringing ideas, but rather entrepreneurs who would have the potential to actually build something. And that was completely new, at least to us. Uh, and we we developed methods to to fast track them sort of. Uh, and after six months, we had eight stars that were already establishing in the U.S. and China, etc. Then a year after, six had vanished. Why was that? Because when they eventually get there, they are overtaken by competition again. And that was more, more, mostly due to team internal issues. Like on the team on board, there would be public investors uh, used to large corporates like Ericsson or um, uh, Novo Nordisk or companies like that. Or they would be familiar with one, two people uh, companies, very small companies. But uh, high growth startups is something completely different. And the measures you have to take, the tempo and the muscles you have to bring to the U.S. market or to the Chinese market are completely different. And you need to be fast. You can't just mimic uh, Ericsson making it smaller. Uh, so we started, We I went to Silicon Valley again, spent longer time there discussing with my Nordic colleagues, the other Nordic countries. And we decided on having a business plan, solving something that it, we could solve from the Nordics. And that would be challenges in the health space because we'd seen tech, which is also another thing that we're pretty good at in the Nordics. Uh, so we got our specialties, but tech had already uh, disrupted um, the, the uh, entertainment industry and the financing, banking industry, et cetera. And we thought that health will be the next one up. So we said, let's take this on and not lose that race. So mm -hmm. that's what we did. And we started creating critical mass, uh, a community of critical mass to be visible, attractive to in international customers and investors, fast track funding for critical uh, business activities uh, and working the Nordic and the international markets. And that's what we've been doing and it's been growing, but the market has been pretty slow. <laughs> I'll come mm -hmm. back to that. We're a bunch no. of partners in, across the Nordics, all with Amazing. the same big role. Yeah, no, I, I remember when I was uh, just uh, arrived in San Francisco 2017, um, I actually met uh, Health Tech Nordics at an event of Silicon Valley Vikings, and I was super impressed 
of what you guys are doing. And that was about the time when I also joined the board of Swiss healthcare startups. Yeah. So um, definitely like huge kudos to what you've also achieved. And maybe if you look back now and you've talked a little bit about this, you know, role of internationalization for um, startups and how important it is. And I think um, what I've learned so far, also being myself now in the Nordics, I think it's really impressive how good actually um the nordic companies are like in doing that the young companies so maybe can you tell a little bit something about how the market has in, involved in those years and is evolving at the moment well the health tech market has evolved slowly it, it had a real uh kickoff uh during covid but it's it's been a lot slower than uh, than we what we hoped as i guess for all new entities like startups it's slower than you think in the beginning. Uh, so I see it in three waves. The first wave being online visits, you know, digitalizing what you already do. Uh, and that had a real breakthrough during uh, during COVID, of course. You all know you can do online doctor's visits, therapy, et cetera. Uh, the next wave is the real paradigm shift. Uh, that's where you, you put tools into the hands of people and really shift things, making people healthier longer, uh, staying out of the hospitals because they're healthier and they know better and whatever. They get treatment uh, digitally at, at a low cost, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's where we're pretty strong now in the Nordics. And then the, the last wave, I would say, is when we use all that data, uh, we will speed up uh, development of diagnostics and and um, and treatments uh, a lot faster. Those are the ways that I see, but we're in the middle right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also uh, takes me to the next thing. That part in the middle is really in the chasm, I would say. The chasm, you know, the valley of death, you know, you have inventions and then you have early adopters and then you have early majority and then you're you have a home run. Uh, but the early adopters, they are there across the globe. So these companies that I work with, they have, you know, in pockets, they've installed in pockets throughout the world, uh, but they don't get the real wide adoption. And that's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. No, I would totally agree. And it's interesting. Uh, just last night, I was at an event um, of the launch of the longevity cluster in um, yeah. Stockholm, actually here at Epicenter Real Estate. And yeah, I think it's uh, just yeah. really, you know, like also the landscape is evolving. And as you said, like, uh, it's this like weird place in between and we really, really need to pick up a gear to, to change um, going forward. And speaking of going forward, um, if you think about so you have now elaborated on where you came from why you started how it has evolved and about also this chasm that we are in maybe if you would say right now like what would you say it's important that you as an organization and also as an ecosystem and um, that you focus on onward like going forward yeah uh, as uh, i would say as always uh, customers 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 uh, but as the market develop, and, and this is a to totally new line of business, it's not traditional life science, it's not traditional tech. So everything is very complex. And, and we see different actors moving faster than others. So it's customers, customers, customers. And it could ideally be, and this is something that I, I think everyone should consider, um, in, in, in this new era, it's not about taking country by country, it, it's going global, uh, perhaps with international corporates, uh, because they mm. can carry solutions much faster across the globe. So identifying those that really dare to do something, uh, many want to stay in, in the business and become digital, uh, but they have traditions that are really uh, difficult for them to change. Others want to enter this market. They come from the tech side or the just, you know, Amazons and things like that, companies like that. Um, some of them may be the carriers of our Swiss and Nordic solutions. Uh, that I think that's the trick. And that's where we're very active right now. Amazing. That's also a good place um, for all the people that are sitting at our events. Definitely something to take away. <laughs> uh, we need to work together to basically scale the future uh, into the future. Um, yeah, we totally agree on that. 
Um, and maybe, um, you know, let's switch now a little bit gears. So you, we touched on like really like the Nordics as an ecosystem in terms of healthcare innovation. Um, but maybe also if you think about innovation in the Nordics, um, I'm also like, that's why I'm here now, like to discover that for uh, my job at Venture, um, kind of like how, what we can learn from the ecosystem. And I've been super impressed so far by the Nordic ecosystem and how like it's really working as a as a whole region together. I think that we could learn a lot from that in Switzerland. We love to do everything, especially in every canton, we have a different solution. <laughs> um, and so I think it's that's really impressive about the Nordics. And I would love to hear maybe from you. How do you see like, how has this, maybe you can say a little bit more something in general terms to innovation in the Nordics or why you guys are so good at it? Uh, depends on how you measure things. I would say that Switzerland is probably one of the world leading innovative countries. Um, so, uh, well, we got some unicorns, you know, in, in Sweden, especially in Stockholm uh, and in the Malmo area, southern part of Sweden, and and very few actually in the Nordics. But so we're good at inventing things, but we're not that good scaling. And we have small small home markets. And that's back again to the reason why we started Health Tech Nordic. Um, but I would say, and it's also difficult, we need to be a critical mass because what that gains, if you're a critical mass of companies that get to know each other and pay it forward, learn from each other, compete with each other, they get become much faster. And I would say in Silicon Valley, there are at least... 50 companies on every topic, you know, and they meet regularly and they learn from each other. Uh, having 50 was really difficult 12 years, uh, 10 years ago, I can tell you in the Nordics and, and having them meeting each other. I mean, you know, it's huge areas and, and mm -hmm. it's not that densely populated. So it, it has been tricky, but it's, it's really key to get people together and, and trusting each other and, and learning and, and paying it things forward. And I think that grew with the tech scene in Stockholm and Malmo, really. That's mm -hmm. where entrepreneurs started um, started working with an attitude that was kind of open. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that's very beneficial. I don't know how you do that, to do it or how in, in Switzerland. And I would mm -hmm. love to see how you're doing things. Uh, yes, now we definitely need to continue this conversation beyond the event and this interview of today, and we will. Um, but yeah, definitely that's something I think also in my all my work that I did with startups in the past, like that's definitely something we need to do more because we have amazing tech in terms of patents, we lead the world, um, but you really need to get better at collaborating and scaling fast. As you said, I think that's kind of the, the really the challenge everywhere, but I think um, we could learn something from the Nordics in that sense. But maybe, I mean, time is running, um, speaking about the, the world and how everything is moving forward. Maybe um, just to wrap it up, I think we could talk for way longer um, and I would love to, yeah, like I have so many more questions. <laughs> um, but maybe you could touch a little bit at, as a kind of a wrap up, um, what do you see coming? What's Health Tech Nordics, Nordic um, in the future? Maybe what's in it for in the next five, years how you, will you develop well in the next five years i hope actually i really do hope that we have provided more health for the buck for billions of people instead of today it's millions of people um and that we have a new line of business that is successful and bringing new economic growth to society that's what i hope within five years but then later on this will be something that is mature and that is rolling by itself. Maybe Health Nordic won't be needed anymore or have a totally different shape, but it's not, it, it's not where the innovation system still is active, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this answer. And um, I would also like to offer you right now, like let's explore this together. Maybe there's a joint future for uh, <laughs> SHS and Health Tech Nordic. Well, everyone, um, everyone still thinks we're the same country out there. So why not? Swiss, mm -hmm. Switzerland and Sweden are always confused. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So per perfect match, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, but 
this is already it, Marianne. Um, incredible. This the time went so fast, but I would love to thank you again for taking the time to talk to us. And we're excited to hopefully have you one time in person, um, also in Switzerland, and continue this conversation. And thank you so much for all your insights. Thank you. Have a marvelous event. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you.